Number 85. This week we are basking in the Anfield glow. We're going to talk Liverpool Barcelona because we're also going to do just a looking ahead section to the uh, the round of fixtures that are coming up. That is that is a because yeah. that's a good yeah, intro. Okay. That is yeah, we, that's, that's solid. Every, that's that's good. That's drawn them in. Mm. I can feel them. Mm. Squats too thin. Squats too thin, Andy. And uh, you know, thing is, I always expect to compete in Europe and in the league. And in the League Cup as well, I am supposed to compete with all that, you know. We haven't had a sign in since January 2018. And Potts is working miracles, best manager we've had since Harry. But, you know, are we supposed to compete on all these fronts? It's only a matter of time before others. It's going to take over, so just need the investment. Neil Warnock, Cardiff City, indeed. The oh, somber good players. Callum Patson. Callum let's Patson's not, been great. Let's he, not forget how old he is. How old is he? Do you know? I told you the other day. Oh, he's twenty-four. He's absolutely correct. Twenty-four. There's a good quiz question there. How old is uh, Callum Patson? The answer yeah. is twenty-four. He's twenty-four years young. Um, so there's a bit of a joke that he won Young Player of the Year. Who? Who else would you? He's 24. <laughs> oh, we're back to this He's again. 24. He's How too old. How old is too old? Oh, um, point. Right, we've drifted from Cardiff City. But look, can I summon they... people who... For people who are listening to this who are Premier League fans, fans of the Premier League or fans of other sides in, pre in the Premier League who may have overlooked Cardiff this season, realise that they've done a miraculous job for having a championship-level squad with a manager who knows the championship better than he knows the Premier so they've done much better than you think they have and to Cardiff City fans listen to this because I know a lot of you do you've been brilliant this season so have yeah. take heart in the fact that you've got a very 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 good championship squad you just need to make a few adjustments and you've got Neil Warnock as your manager mm. have faith like you could legitimately get promoted next season I <laughs> Barcelona. What happened that to Barcelona? Um, they didn't turn up, did they? They weren't great. They were. Look, I, I don't want that to come off as because you know people will see. You know, I'm a Man United fan. They know I'm a Man United fan, so they'll see that as I'm. Not, I'm honestly not belittling that Liverpool performance. They were amazing. And when they went three and up, I was egging them on to get the fourth because I was like, it's perfect story. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So it's not me being bitter, but I genuinely do believe that that Barcelona side was so poor. I think it was lackadaisy, and I think yeah. they, they didn't think they had to show up. I, I, look, we saw it this stage. Like, this is the second year in a row now that Barcelona have gone out of the Champions League after having a plus three goal advantage from the first leg at the Nou Camp. Because last year, Roma knocked them out, obviously. Roma knocked. Becker. Yeah, Roma were they lost four one at the at the new camp, and they had to then take them back and beat them three 0 to go through because of a Jacko late own, uh, late away goal. Yeah, um, and Barca just fell asleep and used the same tactics. It's just like if Barca go out, if they just thought, okay, we've we've got we're three 0 up from the first leg, but let's go out and attack as if we're nil nil, they probably would have won that game. Yeah. It's that complacency which really cost them. Yeah, it just and underestimating. Two years in a row as well. Underestimating. Disappointing. Do you know what I was thinking of? I was thinking, I know about the motivation behind, like, Liverpool must have been intense, but do you know what I think must have given them so much more fire? Yeah. The first leg, when Suarez and Coutinho were just chipping in and with, like, Suarez. Yeah. I, if I was me, if I was in that changing room, I'd be pinning up a picture of the Suarez thing and showing that, what he, how he casually... Like said, yeah, like, look I've said. to motivate him. Like it's a it's a huge motivating factor do, doing like game being the gamesmanship which goes along with it. And to add that, 
Barcelona being so full of themselves after that first yeah. one. Yeah, like, it was interesting. Complacency and underestimating, and underestimating them really like held, held, held it through. And you could see every one of those were fired up. But I also think everything fell for Liverpool. Yeah, it did. Look, everything I, this fell. This isn't a little bit the, the 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 Liverpool for, in the right way. When I say everything, I, when I say everything fell, I just mean it was the rub of the green. A couple of passes connected when they, when they should have. They've capitalised on on situations. You could never see a goal from any of those apart from like the first one where they really caught them really cold. Apart from yeah. that, they worked and it just they, so they, happened they, that everything came together for let's that, not that belittle one, one game. What, Liverpool. Let's not belittle. We're not belittling it. Liverpool. How good were? How good were Liverpool compared to what we've seen? They were phenomenal, um, but I just, I just think that everything felt like fell in the right yeah, places. Yeah, I just want to make sure because obviously I've talked now a bit about how I thought it was a lot to do with how poor Barcelona were, mm-hmm. and I'm, I said this today I to one of my then. friends who's a Liverpool fan who went, yeah, but if it wasn't Liverpool, because you're a Man United fan, and I'm just, like, it's genuinely not that. I thought Barcelona were really poor. I thought Liverpool were phenomenal in that attitude that they would just go out onto the pitch and be like, let's just play. Let's just play. It was like watching. It was like when you were a kid. You know that freedom of just let's just play football. Yeah. It's not about winning and losing. It's just we we've already pretty much lost. That was the attitude. So just go out there and attack them. It's and just it it's credit credit where credit's due. It was for not. Can I ask you a question? Yes, which please. has been bugging me all day. Go for it. And I know my answer. Was that the best comeback in the European Cup slash Champions League history? I think it's got to be up there uh, in in the top three. I would say. I'm, I'm not so sure it's, it's it's the 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 best one. It's the best one of recent times. Oh yeah, it is. It's just I've seen a lot of people online today so the and one. in the press saying that it's the greatest comeback in European history. A lot of people have said this. Now, can I tell you why it's not? Because <laughs> it's not. How many points have you got? Look, it's real. I've got. Can you do like a top? I'll just give you three games which are more impressive. Okay, this is your top list, top three better European performances than Champions League. Better comebacks, yes. Go for it. Okay. Um, the 1999 final, where in the 90th minute Manchester United have been beaten by Bayern Munich. Are you a Manchester United fan? Yeah. Oh. This is the first one. I'll start with this because it's the obvious one. In the 90th minute, they believed we'll buy in a beat us we haven't got the treble in the 93rd minute we won the treble in that short space of time in the final of the European competition that is a better comeback and it meant more because it was in the final that's game one that's more that's a better comeback you say the Barcelona the best one? comeback the, the next one is the best example of why this isn't the best comeback the Barca the Liverpool beating Barcelona um, in 2017, Barcelona were losing to PSG on our group. Uh, they were losing um, overall. PSG had beaten them 4 0 in the first leg, and then they got an away goal. So they had to score six goals overall, Barcelona. They needed three goals without conceding when the clock hit 89 minutes. They needed to score three goals and the clock says 89 minutes have been played. If I said to anyone in the world, well, they need to score three, everyone would go, I'm going home. I'm going home for a drink. That's the game that if you're a fan, you go, oh, I'm going home now because we're not going to win this. We need three goals in and it's 89 minutes have been played. I'm going to make it early, like beat the traffic. And Barcelona did it. They scored three goals after, 89, after the 89th minute. That is a better comeback than Liverpool beating Barcelona. It's still historic and it's still iconic. It is still historic. Right. I, I say and three games, look, I'll leave it at game, two because I think those two are big enough examples. Love or hate Liverpool, you've got to say, well, that's gr- just look, incredible. It's a great like, comeback, we just, it's we not the best. We saw companies, a shot from company flying as well. I've been treated to some fantastic football at the, at the arse end of this season so far. Yeah. But that, the form that they showed to get through, is, it is iconic in its approach. There was players who played out their skin above and beyond, like Origi, Wijnaldum. Trent uh, Alexander-Arnold. We'll mention him in a minute. Was okay. world-class. He was world-class. Like, and he's, what, 19, 20? 19. I just think with some of them... And he was born and raised in Liverpool. Do you think... What a story, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Do you think that game 
was predestined to be that way or yeah. do you feel like it was chaos theory and they worked hard and it just so happened to, to fall do you in know the right what? I way? Think, I think in this scenario... Do you believe in the right, predestined the, approach? I, right, okay. Written in the stars. Right, I do believe that there are fate. certain things which are fate when it, and it was bound to be. No, when, um, when Barcelona were under Pep, mm-hmm. it was fate that all these players would come through at the same time and would just so happen to take over uh, to come into the first team you know Pedro uh, Messi hadn't long been there well been there a few years but he needed guidance and was still young Hmm. but Pedro was brought up uh, PK was brought back Busquets was brought through Busquets and they had Iniesta and Xavi it was destined that Guardiola would be the manager at that moment and it would peak into the best football I've ever seen play by club it was destined that Man United were going to win the treble in 99 this, I genuinely think, is just Klopp's chaos theory. I do think it's just... I like that, Klopp's Klopp, chaos theory. I think it's great. I think, it's, I think it is Klopp's chaos theory. I really do. I think it's KCT. His, yeah, KCT. That's what it is. KCT. It's KCT. Look, it was a fantastic result. and I just think that that game was the antithesis of everything just coming together. But it just brought on by the fact that they just hustled their way and it just fell for him in a weird way in like a yeah, chaos sort of way great. when you see that Alexander the Trent Alexander Arnold first assist the cross for, for, he, he wins the ball back for one has a little mm-hmm. gathering in, on the side and it comes back to him and he races down that cross he whipped in was supposed to be for Mane but yeah. it got through to Origi because it took a deflection all of those little things she just culminated can we we've got to wrap this section we up shout out to the ball boy yeah, shout, shout out, out. what's this, his name right we've got to wrap this section up but that ball boy who as soon as the ball went out of play for the Liverpool corner he immediately didn't go to the ball but he had a spare one he releases the spare one super quick to Trent Alexander-Arnold then he fakes that he's going to get the other ball back so that they can start the corner he does it really slowly and set motions I'll give me the ball walks back and he walks back super slowly all those players are watching that ball boy going oh he's we're not kicking off yet because look at the ball boy look how nonchalant he is he's already released the ball to Trent Alexander-Arnold to and the that's corner. what and it was that freed up the time that freed up the time for Trent Alexander-Arnold to put the ball in for the Origi to score so you think that was predestined that was that no that was that just, wasn't that was that, that was, was a Klopp's that chaos was KCT theory. that was a, a case, right let's a end it there Liverpool have just romped it as well. There's a lot of romping going on. Every, there is a lot of romping. There's like, what is it, a 24 point gap or something? It's a, definitely the best title. Man race. City wins for you. Yeah, yeah. The best Premier. Look, the reason that it's not been the best is that if you take. Last season, everyone said Man City getting 100 points was an anomaly. That season where they killed it was just going to be an anomaly no one will do that again like when Harry Kane couldn't score 30 goals a season every season and he has you know it's it was like oh well Man City only won it because of other factors it will be the level it will be a level playing field it comes to my favourite part of the show now where we this is an episode we call listener feedback where listeners give us feedback so this week we've had we've been we've been a few bits of feedback this week i'm really pleased thank you very much for getting in touch if you did Mm. at a touchline rant on twitter on the socials on the social davy goodwilly he says this was a good week if you like big goodwilly style Dion Dublin says stairs going up to the bedrooms. And you've got your stairs right in front of you going up to the bedroom. Thanks for that, Dion. Limvoy Primus, he's been on and says, Luke, of course it was the greatest comeback of all time. You absolute clown. It's crushing. Reggie Blinker. Actually, boys, you're right. I'm really going to miss Cardiff City. Mm. They made the Blinker Man Blinker Tears a Joy. And Sunday Elise says needs a soup song more of Mitch. Like I said, that attached line rant. Um... That's we, it. We come to an end. That's it for the. We that's the it end. for the week. So that is it. I think that was a that was a good episode. Yeah. Yeah. We talked Liverpool, Barcelona. We also forgot to say this is, if not the best Champions League. Oh, it's definitely the best Champions League of all time. Yeah. Yeah. 
A hundred percent. Of all time. I was just going to say in recent years. Mm, it's one of the best of all time, I'd say, Champions League this year. It's been so good. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, yeah, we've come to an end. Time. We'll chat on. We'll chat on. Do we haven't done? What? Record. We haven't said we're doing a live show. <laughs> Straight into a small porch here, and you've got your stairs right in front of you going up to the bedroom. There are the stairs going up to the bedroom. Nice.